start soon, so we'll give it a couple of seconds to just set up. All right, so there we go. So for today's AGM, um, you can have your camera off or you can have your camera on, uh, whichever one you would like. But I am do I am asking that whoever is doing their speech at the moment do just please have your camera on just so people know who you are when you're speaking and doing your speech and doing the Q&A section. For anyone who's asking the questions, you don't have to have the camera on if you don't want to, but if you choose to do so, you can. Uh, I also ask that you please keep yourself muted if you aren't talking, just because with how the Google Meets is being filmed, um, uh, the camera focuses on whoever is speaking. So if there's ever any background noises, it just alternates between speakers uh, very rapidly, and that might cause a bit of confusion for anyone who is watching. Um, and as well, during the Q&A period, I should say this. Actually, I'll just start from the beginning. So how this is going to work is uh, we'll go through each of the roles, starting from, I guess, at the bottom. So that would be something like the secretary and then go up to GSO, then vice president, treasurer, and then presidency. <clears throat> um, so I will introduce the role briefly, uh, just so everyone who would be watching knows what it is. And then I'll call on the candidates, whoever is uh, running for that spot one-on-one -on -one just to let them kind of finish doing their speech. And then after both people or the one person is completed their speech for that role, then we'll open the floor for questions. And then after the question part, we'll move on to the next role. Um, and if at any point you have any question, extra questions or any confusion, or if you do want to ask a question to a contestant, there is a raise hand option at the bottom at the bar. So yes, you can test out if you'd like. Chris has tested that out. Um, do you have an actual question, Chris? You can either unmute or type in the chat box. I'll take that as a, you don't actually have a question and you're just texting. Okay, yes, so that's the other thing. If you don't wanna actually speak, then you can also type in the chat box and then I will help moderate and read out the questions. Okay, sounds good. Does anyone have any question, immediate questions before we start? All right, excellent. So if you do not, um, okay, so first off, um, the two that will be up will be for the position of gym safety officer. So for people who aren't familiar with the gym safety officer role, um, that is for the person who is pretty much in charge of keeping the gym safe whenever there is badminton being played. And then they're also in charge of reviewing and updating the club, club safety plans and the club rules. And the safety plan was just something new we introduced it today, is, I mean, not today, this year, because with COVID, there were a bit more restrictions in terms of um, health and safety regulations that weren't the standard playing safety regulations for club safety. So the GSO would be in charge of those two documents and making sure they're up to date and are aligned with the provincial guidelines for what safety looks like in a recreational environment. Um, and then they're also in charge of making sure everyone kind of follows the rules. So they're the lead in terms of enforcing gym safety inside the gym. And then they also need to complete standard first aid training by the start of the school year. So that's September. So just a bit of a clarification for people who have who weren't 100% aware about this position coming back. Just because we did have an extra person who was interested in joining uh, at, on the exec team. That's why the position of gym safety officer was reopened up just because that one does have a little bit more responsibility and it makes a little bit more sense to kind of pull that role out from the other positions um, more so than any of the other roles. Okay, so first for gym and safety officer, we have two people running for that today. So I believe that is, well, let me clarify here. So we have Merritt and Jocelyn. So Merritt, I will open the floor for you first to do your speech for the gym safety officer nominee. 
Hi everyone. Uh, my name is. Can you hear me first? Can you hear me good? Yeah. Okay. Uh, hi. My name is Merit uh, El Mary. It's a very weird name because I I'm from the Middle East. It's Egypt particularly. Uh, I'm um, uh, in my second year of uh, Bachelor of Science uh, with specialization in uh, immunology and infection. Um, I joined uh, the badminton club last semester only, and it was just a life-changing opportunity. It was great. I get to meet lots of people, uh, lots of great people. I get to um, actually, I didn't play badminton before. I was learning, but like I found a lot of people welcoming me and and like teaching me their techniques and stuff. And it was just a great opportunity. That's why I I feel like I want to pay back for uh, the club. Uh, um, I received already uh, first aid and CPR training, but I don't mind doing it again because I, it's it's very important. And uh, I'm a pre-med student, so when it comes to safety and health in general, I think I'm a good fit for this position. Um, I'm also uh, running because I I know how hard it is these days. I know how uh, it's like the situations are changing rapidly and I feel like uh, I'll be a good fit to um, just like, uh, I will help whoever is in charge of the emails to like send out emails to like tell them about the new safety measures, um, any rules, any updates. Uh, I'm also very outgoing. Uh, you might not notice it from here, because but I'm very outgoing. And when it comes to implementing the rules, I don't mind having um, a one-on-one -on -one talk with like the new people when they come in, because I know like when you're new, you're confused, you're you don't know what's going on. But I don't mind actually walking with you and walking through everything with you one-on-one -on -one if you want. And if you have any questions, I'll be there to answer them safety wise non safety wise i'm always open for questions and yeah that's it all right thank you merrick for that uh next up we will open the floor for jocelyn to do her speech for the gym safety officer hello um you guys all hear me okay perfect yep. so my name is jocelyn um i'm in third year of Bachelor of Arts degree, uh, majoring in linguistics and minoring in elementary education. So I'm a good fit for being a GSO or gym and safety officer because I've had training at a, uh, for a baby, from a babysitting course for a CPR training. And also last winter I was in education class and we had a CSL placement where I had to um, student teach the grade threes and the grade fives. And so during gym class, I, I was in charge of making sure that people were safe, people were not injuring themselves. And I had to make, I had to tell them guys, like, I don't want to see you guys injured. Otherwise I'll be the one in charge. I'll be the one who's in trouble if I let you guys like, because they were running in socks in the gym and this gym was really slippery. So I had to intervene and say, no, you guys can't run in socks. You guys have to run in shoes because I know you guys will slip and you guys will get injured. And I don't want that to happen. And I've had instances where people, you know, weren't very cautious. So I had to intervene and help them and say, guys, you need to stop. I don't want to see anybody injured. So from that experience of um, teaching people not to like run in like run in the gym uh, with socks on. Um, I feel it's important that I will bring my leadership skills from that experience to the badminton club because I've been in the club for about a year and a half. I didn't join last like last semester because of COVID, but last winter I was there and and um, the first time I was there I was really scared to play with the executives. But after I got used to it, I was like. Great. I, this club has been amazing and I really am honored to be in this club. So, and I want to help people speak up and say, you guys need to, you know, not be injured. I want you guys to be safe. And, uh, that's why. And so that's why you should vote for me to be your GSO.
Thank you. Thank you, Jocelyn, for doing your speech as well. So now we will turn it over to the question Q&A section. So Simon is here and he is co-hosting as well. So he will be in charge of kind of going through that with you guys. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Simon, as Shirley just introduced. And yeah, so we have a few questions for you guys as gym and safety officer. Um, and I'll start with the first question and then you guys can take turns answering the question uh, just as you guys presented. So the one question we have is a scenario-based question, and it kind of goes like this. Um, would you rather babysit a crying infant for a day or have an unwanted house guest for a week? And if you guys want to think about it, that's cool. But... Jocelyn, do you want to answer that or? Sure, I can uh, take a stab at it. Yeah, for me, I personally, I prefer babysitting and crying baby because I know I have two nieces and I know exactly how it feels to, you know, calm the baby down and make sure they're safe and everything. So I have that experience. So therefore I prefer having like babysitting and crying baby because I have two nieces and I know exactly how it feels. And I have like cousins and I've looked after them a bit. So visit them and when they're young and when they're crying, I just help them be playful. I'm a playful person. So I'm an approachable, uh, approachable person too. So if there's anything, I'm there to help you guys be safe. So. So, but in the case of an unwanted house guest, do you think it would be a challenge then? to communicate with them and live with them for a whole week? It would for sure, yeah, because I really have not had any experience of having like an unwanted guest. And like for me, because since I don't know that person, I don't really know what exactly to say to them. Like, because obviously I don't want to be rude or anything. So it's, that's a bit of a challenge for me, but I can definitely, I'm willing to um, step it up and learn for that, learn how to deal with that, for sure. Okay, okay. And would the other candidate like to tell us uh, your opinion or your answer? Yes, I, I totally um, relate to Jocelyn because um, not only I have lots of nieces, and cousins and nephews and it's crazy but i also i'm a leader in my church for uh, sunday's uh, school and i've uh, i've had experience with everything from nursery all the way to grade six and sevens so i think a crying baby will not be a, as a problematic as a guest that i have to deal with for like uh a week as you said apparently um and I also see that the, I don't know, the timing is also a factor because it's like, I mean, a baby that is crying for, for a whole day, it's, it's like, it's less trouble. And like, I, I love babies. Like, okay, <laughs> it's a confession. Um, I feel like a baby, uh, with a baby, like your options are limited. It's either like he's hungry, he's sleepy, or like she, um, yeah, it's limited. Yes, there'll be like a little bit of problem in the communication, but at the end of the day, it's like, it's a baby. Like it has its basic needs and it's fine. But with unwanted guests for a week, uh, that's gonna be a little, a little bit challenging. But I feel like also if I had to do it, I mean, the first day is gonna be hard. Maybe the second day, third day, where I'm gonna get used to it. And yeah, I hope it'll be better. I don't know. <laughs> okay, that's a, that's great. That's great. So now if we extrapolate this question to your role as gym and safety officer, we can imagine the house guest as a member of our club that perhaps isn't following the rules of the club and isn't being safe to other members. And unlike the crying baby, they aren't just doing this for a day. They're doing this week after week, every club session. They seem to be breaking these rules. How would you communicate with this member of our club? And after Merit, Jocelyn, could you answer this question as well? Sure. 
I go first? Yeah, Mary. Do you, do you okay. think you could go first? Um, first, uh, I will take, like, I'll put myself in the shoes of that person. Maybe he's, like, or she uh, is breaking the rules because they don't know the rules. So at first, make sure that they understand the rules. They, they Like, I've talked to them, and I have, like, made it clear that these are the rules. And second of all, like, uh, I would tell them to um, that these rules are for them. And the first is like, it's for them first and then for the safety of others. So like rules are made not to be broken because like if you break them, you will get hurt. And um, and then later on, if I feel like, okay, they don't care about their health, the, their safety, I would try to tell them like, okay, but there's other people and like you have the freedom to do whatever you want, but as long as you're not hurting others, so if you're hurting others, like, or you're, like, exposing everyone else to danger, um, this is, like, that, it's done. Like, you can't do this because that's outside of your freedom. Um, and then, like, if they don't uh, agree to what I'm saying, if they still break the rules, I feel like I will take more assertive way and maybe talk to other executive members and tell them like, okay, if this keeps continuing, we might have the risk of uh, someone getting dan uh, in danger or uh, hurt or anything. So I would think like, let's warn him or like warn them as a team. And then after that, I think the safest uh, or the best way is to let them know that like, you, that you, cannot, you cannot be in that team anymore you know what i mean so yeah. okay i see that's a good answer jocelyn could you tell us your thoughts uh, on this question yeah absolutely so according to what Merit said i totally i 100 percent agree with her in that we gotta understand like before we jump to conclusions and makes all these like different rules to them saying like a three rule strike for example um, we got to understand where this person's coming from, the different factors, and why they're making like different like choices that we do. So we got to understand their background, like who they are, before making any conclusions. But if that is like, if that is like you know continuous, I got to have a three strike rule. We're saying this is warning one. If this is not happening, I'll give you another warning. But if that of those rules do not work, I will need to step it up to bring to the president or higher level like executives to do with that situation. Um, because I don't want anybody to get hurt. And if that person keeps hurting them, I do not I do not tolerate that situation. So I gotta have a step up and say, no, like you're done. Like after three roof strike, and if that doesn't work, I need to bring it up to deal with that situation. Say like, no, you're done, and yeah. Okay, that's a great concept you bring up, Jocelyn. Does anyone else have any more questions? I just have one more question. But does anyone else have any questions for our human safety officer candidates today? Okay, Chris has a okay, question why here. Ahead, Chris. Chris, why don't you go ahead and say it if you can. Oh, sure, thank you very much. All right, so my question to both GSAs, and we can start, uh, well, I, I guess we'll, we can start with Jocelyn here. If you were by the big board where they have all the names and the court things and everything, and court three has just finished their game, and Shirley, Nick, Julius, and Rose are next on court, what will you do? Can you repeat that question, please? For sure. So if you're by the big board, court three has just finished your game, and Shirley, Nick, Julius, and Rose are next on court, what will you do? Like if they're, if those previous people are still playing, or? Well, if, if, if they're getting off and you have to announce the next court. Um, in that situation, um, as a GSO, 
Um, once they're done, I have to keep an eye on those people to make sure that, let's say, if the next courts are playing, that we got to make sure that they're not stepping on the lines because if the people on the, the those next court are still playing, then what if, let's say, someone gets, you know, hurt by a racket or something and, you know, so we got to keep, we got to keep on an eye on those people who are done on the court to make sure that they follow the rules. Um, so that like before announcing the groups, the next groups, I would make sure that they follow the rules and not step on the line while the other groups are playing still before announcing the next group to make sure everyone's safe. If not, then I'll have to have like a one-on-one -on -one talk or whatever need to be, you know, stepped up to um, intervene and not and prevent that situation for, okay. some, for someone to get hurt. Okay, thank you. Shirley, permission to reword the question? Yeah, sure, go ahead. Okay. Could you please demonstrate how you would call court three for Shirley, Nick, Julius, and Rose? As in, how would you yell out to Shirley, Nick, Julius, and Rose to go to court three? Um, hmm. In this case, um, I would say make sure that the previous groups are out of the court first before you guys go on because I don't want to see anybody hurt and like follow the rules, follow the, follow the lines, like do not step on the lines. Otherwise you'll get hurt before going on the court and make sure they, they leave and follow the rules before you guys go on. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Merit, I'll turn over to you. Um, I think that yelling is not going to be like the best, option because uh i don't know i've been on court before and it's it's kind of you know dynamic everyone is running everyone is yelling everyone is you know doing their thing having fun so i think i would go like five minutes before they're finished uh the, the team who's playing is finished i'm gonna go and just tell uh these three people like oh hey like you're next uh in, in court three they're finishing up um uh, so uh just just wait outside uh don't step on the line you know just wait outside until they're done and go have fun thank, thank you, you Merit and jocelyn for all your answers uh unfortunately for the sake of time that was the last question for gso so we will need to move on to the next position sorry simon i know you had a question um but next up, we do have the secretary position up for running. So for the secretary, they're pretty much in charge of the operations of meetings and making sure that they run smoothly. So mostly facilitating meetings, also drafting up meeting minutes, just so that anyone who is unable to attend those meetings have a good idea of what was discussed during those meetings, as well as any action plans moving forward. Um, the secretary is also in charge of managing the email, so making sure that any important information is sent out to our members or the community to really uh, be on top of that communication piece. Uh, and then the new addition to this role is to also uh, be managing the social media accounts and updating our accounts that way. So those would be our Facebook account, our YouTube account, and our Instagram account as well. So a big portion of the secretary's role is communication. And the two people that we have running for this position are both Merit and Danica. So for this one, we will start off with Danica first to do your speech, if you could, please. Hi. OK, so my name is Danica. I'm in my fourth year of the neuroscience program here at the U of A. And I've been a badminton club member since 2019. I really love badminton club. I think it's a lot of fun. And I'm interested in learning more about what goes on behind the scenes. I'm really hoping to be part of this year's upcoming executive team as I would really like to become more involved and to get to know how the club runs. Um, in particular, I'm running for secretary because I love being organized and being able to help others out. 
I'm currently a mini study group tutor at the U of A, which involves hosting a weekly study session in which I answer questions, explain difficult topics, and provide practice worksheets. With this position, I need to be very organized and to communicate effectively with the students that I tutor. I'm often sending out updates and answering questions over email. I almost always reply to my emails within half an hour. I was also the scholarship officer this past year in, an, in another club, which required staying on top of my responsibilities and communicating with the rest of the club when necessary. This position also involved working alongside the rest of the executive team towards shared goals. With that in mind, I feel that I would be a good fit for this position because I'm very organized, I'm dedicated to doing my best, I'm a team player, and I replied to emails very promptly. Thank you. All right, thank you for that, Danica. I'm sorry I chopped up your name there. Um, okay, so next we do have Merit. Uh, if you could please make your speech for this position. Hi again. Uh, my name is Merit Elmeri. Uh, I'm in my second year of uh, Bachelor of Science with specialization in immunology and infection. Uh, I'm running for the position of secretary because um, uh, I'm a very goal-oriented person. Uh, I like to chop my big tasks into smaller tasks and, and just doing a small to-do list. And I feel like um, uh, this is this is what I want to do in emails. I want to break down the big announcements into smaller pieces, uh, points. And uh, I also uh, want to implement that um, for the people who have busy schedule and uh, big, like, you know, they always uh, like having everything on their calendar. I'll put the calendar, uh, the dates on uh, in a way that if you click on it, it goes to the calendar. Um, I'm, uh, I, I also volunteer as a note taker. So I really, I really like taking uh, detailed notes and um, I like, I like having my notes organized and color coded sometimes. Uh, uh, I feel like I will be a good fit because um, I like in my church, I belong into small church and in my church we're uh, planning to launch a new uh, uh, kids ministry uh, group. And like, so I'm uh, the ministry leader for my small church and uh, that requires a lot of communication, a lot of emails going back and forth between, uh, you know, other parts and other ministries in our church. And not only that, but we are communicating with a bigger church that is trying to, you know, help us and teach us what how to do it because this is a brand new stuff. And I feel like uh, this year with COVID, everything is brand new. So I am very good with acclimating and. Uh, you know, going with the flow. Uh, I might sometimes be a little conservative. I'm like, I want to do it this way, but I try my best to just take in other um, opinions. And um, what else? Uh, oh, I also uh, realized that they're merging uh, public relations to secretary position that was a last minute thing or not last minute but as a new thing and that's great for me because i i know how important social media it is for us not only for, like um it's good it's a good tool to uh, talk to ask questions and the way that i was introduced to this club was through social media so i will be so honored to take on the social media and try to be as active as i can on social media and that would also give me the opportunity to be a little more creative, you know, because, yeah, I, I like I like putting in stuff together and making everything beautiful and stuff. Thanks. OK, thank you guys for your your little blurbs. I think it'll help our members understand uh, what you guys want to bring to the table for the secretary. I just have one quick question. Um, I guess because Shirley said Danica, but it's Danica, isn't it? Because Danica went first. Why don't you answer this question first then? So it goes like this. 
Would you rather be stuck on an island alone or with someone who talks incessantly? You can think about it first, and then both of you guys just give a quick, like, two-minute response and try your best. Okay. That's a tricky question, and I honestly, I think both would be a little difficult. But if I had to pick, I would probably go with being with one person who won't stop talking. Um, just because myself, I, I'm, I like being around people, and I think just being by yourself for long periods of time would kind of suck, which... I guess I could see during COVID, lots of by yourself stuff. And um, even if a person won't stop talking, I'll take that over nobody. And at the end of the day, I'm, I've been able to tune people out before if I have to. <laughs> so I think that's what I would pick. Okay, okay. And Merit, what would you say? Okay, sorry. What was the th second thing, being stuck with someone who talks a lot and... Yeah, so it's either being alone on the island or someone who mm -hmm. just talks incessantly, which basically means they just keep talking yeah. constantly. No, I think I I totally agree with Danica. Like, yeah, um, I'm probably gonna be the person who talks more because I'm just I I love talking. I love expressing myself, and I I love you know. Um, but I also appreciate some alone time, so I feel like it would be easier. Because with a person, you can just talk to them and be like, okay, I, I would appreciate some alone time. So can I just have my own time? And we're on a island, so there will be a lot of space. So I'm going to, so I would choose being desired with someone. Okay, I see. Does anyone else in the club here have a question for two candidates? Okay, maybe not. So I'll oh, sorry, Chris, go ahead. Go ahead. Hi, good evening, folks. Um, so you talked a lot about in your speeches about the secretary's role, uh, you know, during meetings and, and things like that. As it pertains to your role while club is in session, what where would you have the most impact during the actual badminton club session as secretary? We'll start with Merritt. I feel just um, I don't know welcoming people because I I feel like it's it's very important to welcome people. Uh, I was I was uh, lucky enough to have um, someone to welcome me when we started and have someone who like talks to me and like teaches me stuff. So I feel like I will be I don't know maybe I'll make a welcome team. It's gonna be only me. Uh, also, I think it'd be very important for me, like, to help with the nets and, like, you know, with the physical work. Uh, I mean, I'm a very energetic person. I, I love running and I love doing stuff by hand. So I feel that's how I'm going to help. Okay, I guess I'll answer it too now. Um, I definitely agree with the helping set up and everything. If you're going to be there... Um, at the beginning of session, which as an exec executive, um, I would presume we're expected to be there early and I would want to be. So I would definitely help set up. Um, on top of that, I would definitely try to make myself available to anyone for any questions they may, may have about the club, um, any concerns, anything, anything at all. I'd try to make myself available for that. And um, on top of that, maybe keep track of attendance. I'm not sure what the secretary normally does, but uh, maybe keep track keep track, sorry, of things like that. Thank you. Hi. Uh, hi. So, so part of the secretary's role is to keep members updated on what's going on. So my question to both of you guys is, how would you go about this on updating the members, whether it's emails or our social, like what's your message? I think for sure for any important update, I think sending an email is one of the more reliable ways, especially as students, we're always using our emails. And I know for myself personally, if I get an important email, I'll, I'll make sure to keep it. Um, so I think for sure sending out emails. And then on top of that, there's so many other social media platforms to use. So I think there's nothing stopping you from also posting it, putting it on Facebook, putting it on Instagram, um, wherever else, just to make sure that everyone's seeing it in case someone doesn't use email as much they might see it on facebook or see it on instagram or wherever else
Yeah, I I totally agree with with Danica. It's it's very important to have both emails and the social media. And there's also, uh, I don't know. I would I would um. I would focus more on making posters because I don't know, but I'm a person who loves visual, and I like when I see a poster, and I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, I've seen I've seen something that talks about this before. So, uh, that's some way in. All right, thank you, Mayor and Danica. That it makes the end of our Q and A section for the secretary. So mo moving on, we will be now talking about the role of treasurer. So for people who aren't familiar with the role of the treasurer, they are in charge of uh, providing accurate budgets throughout the semester and then balancing kind of uh, the money coming in and then the money going out. Uh, they also look for and apply for the funding opportunities for our club, as well as maintain some of the relationships we have with some of our other community members, such as Dream Tea and UMO. And for this year, they will also be collaborating with the Vice Pres for the events, um, and then also assisting in tournament planning if it is necessary. So for that role, we have Danica running. So if Danica, if you could make your speech for this section, please. Okay, hi again. Um, so I already gave an introdu introduction on myself, so I'll skip over a lot of that. Um, but anyway, I'm running for treasurer because I love being organized, as I mentioned before, and I would really like to gain more experience when it comes to planning events and with um, finances and budgets. Um, this past year, I was scholarship officer for another club, which required making a budget for scholarship expenses, organizing and planning small events, um, and finding academic resources to disperse to the rest of the club. Furthermore, I collaborated with executive and general members for fundraisers and other club business. At times there was a lot going on, but I was able to stay on top of my responsibilities as scholarship officer. Um, in addition, in my own personal life, I've always been very good at seeking out and applying for scholarships and um, bursary opportunities. With that in mind, I feel that I would be a good fit for this position because I'm very organized. I'm dedicated to doing my best. I'm a team player. And I think I'm highly capable of juggling many responsibilities at once. Thank you. Okay, Danica. So we have a couple questions here, but before we do that, why don't we open the floor to if anyone has questions? Okay, Chris, go ahead. Hi, Danica. So you're running for treasurer here. So in speaking with either the current treasurer or any other current exec member, what's the biggest piece of advice that you have taken from them to ensure that the Babenden Club remains financially stable during these uncertain times? Okay, so I think your question is assuming that I've talked to the current treasurer, which I have not. <laughs> um, but in terms of what I think is probably really important is trying to keep the big picture in your mind of what badminton club is for and try to balance all the things that you want to include and make sure that you have enough money with what you have to do the things that you want to do, I guess. Um, and I think being organized and staying on top of all of that and really communicating with the rest of the executive and the club, uh, I think would be important. Thank you. Uh, does anyone else have any questions they'd like to ask Danica? Okay, if not, I'm going to ask you, Danica, a question. It's a little bit broad. You might wonder how this even relates to being a treasurer. Um, but would you rather end wars or end world hunger? In your perspective, which one would add more value to the, this world? That is a very good question, and they are two really big issues. Um, I feel like I feel like if I could end one, it would probably be world hunger, just because I, I don't know the numbers for sure, but I feel like there's probably more people that are affected by world hunger than war. Um, again, I'm not sure about that. Um, and it also seems something that is more solvable, like um, – if we would distribute food resources in a better way, in a more sustainable way, I think it's something that could eventually be reached. Um, and so I think I would 
pick that over wars. Wars are a much more complex issue. Um, how, how do you stop wars forever? Because that seems like it's how humans are. So I don't know. That's a great answer. Good answer. Thank you. There's no one else for this role, right? No, there's no one else for this role, Simon. But I was going to ask a question in terms of treasure things. Um, so this will probably have to be the last one. So just so we can make sure we end things on time. So uh, Danica, um, if you, there was, there's something that we do called a craft presentation. So it would be doing a presentation to try to get funding for our club. CRAFT stands for Campus Recreation Enhancement Fund. So it is just money that we can get to enhance uh, the recreation that we offer to our club members. So in the past, uh, we've done a couple of things as get funding for to travel to Calgary to play badminton, or we've gotten funding for uh, booking the gym, the main gym uh, for open tournaments and things like that. Um, in your mind, what would you want to do for a craft presentation to get like, what would you want to get funding for for our club that you can think of that would enhance recreation for our UABC? Well, I definitely think it's important. Like, obviously, we need to rent the gym. Um, so that would be the number one, of course. Um, and I think being able to do the tournament, like you say, and go to Calgary and have these other tournaments um, are really important. It helps make it a little bit more fun. Um, maybe get involved with other schools, like if we're going to Calgary. So I think that'd be a really cool opportunity. Um, and I don't know if the uh, end of the semester dinners would be part of the treasure duty or not, but I think that's also a really great way to get all the club members or most of the club members to um, get to know each other better and to hang out. And I think that's also something I'd definitely like to keep going to. All right, thank you for that. Um, so uh, we will move on to our next roles that are running. So that will be the vice president nominees. So for the vice president, they are in charge of leading tournament planning. So if we do have any open tournaments that we can run or any in-club tournaments that can be run, they will be in charge of planning those. Uh, they will also be working with the treasurer to plan the any end of semester events, uh, however that looks for next year. And then they um, overall just provide support to the team members as well. So the two people we have running for this position are, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, May, Mai, and Jocelyn. So um, I think, Mai, if you could go up first and do your speech, please. Oh, yes. Hi. Sorry. Uh, thank you. Yeah, it's uh, just pronounced Mai. Um, I am, or sorry, uh, my name is Mai, and I guess I am just currently in my first year of a Bachelor of Science in Pharmacology. And the reason that I chose to run for the role of Vice President is just because I believe that I possess the necessary qualities for this position. And I understand that a huge part about being Vice President is being able to lead tournaments, plan events, and collaborate with the other executive members. And these are all just things that I've been able to experience in the past, just because in high school, I was the graduation council president and uh, badminton team captain. So uh, I guess things like balancing budgets and sorry, uh, planning huge and small events aren't something that are necessarily new to me. Uh, but of course, I also understand that the university is a much uh, larger community than my high school. Uh, so this is also another reason why I decided to run because I would just like to be able to continue to use and develop these valuable life skills. Uh, I also uh, know that the event coordinator role is now combined with the role of VP. So I guess some ideas that I have are, well, um, I already know that you guys do team dinners. So I was thinking we could always follow them up by something fun. Like we could always uh, go for dinner and maybe go for like karaoke or escape rooms afterwards. Uh, if you guys are interested, just so that we could um, just work on our, I guess, uh, team bonding skills. Um, I guess if COVID is, or if the circumstances are still as they are now, uh, some online events that we could always do are things like Jeopardy, Kahoot game shows. I saw that you guys did uh, Family Feud already. 
Um, we could also do um, online workouts or uh, board games if you guys are interested, I guess. And I guess just to finish off, I just wanted to say that I consider myself a very organized person. So uh, if you do choose to vote for me, you can relax knowing that whatever is my responsibility will be organized and thoroughly thought out. So uh, thank you. <laughs> Thank you for that, Mai. So next up, we have Jocelyn. If you can make your speech for VP, please. Hello. Um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Jocelyn. Um, the reason I'm running, there are actually several reasons why I should be your VP. Um, first of all, I have never been in this like VP position before. However, I am willing to gain experience by being in this position. I also want to like make a difference in our club by carrying this wonderful legacy that the previous executives have brought. And I really want to keep it up. Um, uh, in addition, by working with the other exec team members, I am hoping to create a happy medium for all the members of the club. Um, the second reason is that during the last year of my high school year, I was the president of the UNICEF club. Um, but before that, I was one of the executive team members who helped a previous president with organizing the events like such as sales um, to fundraise for the poor kids in developing countries. By being the president of my UNICEF club, I would love to bring my leadership skills forward to this wonderful badminton club. Thirdly, I am an open-minded person. I am open to any suggestions or ideas that you may have and take them into account before making any decisions. Um, exactly what I have done during my presidency for the UNICEF Club. Um, lastly, I love collaborating with others to brainstorm ideas um, because I love working with people. I, I'm an outgoing person, so I love working with others and I've been in group work and I love it. So um, if you decide to vote for me as your VP, I will definitely make sure that everyone is included. So in other words, other than the duties that I will fulfill as your VP, such as leading events and turn in many events, as I'm very familiar with, because it is very not, it's not um, new, because I've, it's very similar to what I've done with um, deciding like the fundraising sales for our, um, during my UNICEF days. Um, but when providing feedback or suggestions or any opinions that you guys have, um, don't feel left out. I will make sure your idea counts. Um, remember this, take this home uh, as your little message. Everyone's opinions are not judged, but, but they are counted when we make decisions. And my value is inclusion. I do not feel that like people being excluded is not what I value. So if you guys are like shy, if you guys are not, um, feel shy to talk to me in person, just, just send me an email and I'm more than happy to. I am there to answer questions for you. And uh, yeah, just take that home as a message. Everyone's opinions are not judged, but they're accounted when we make decisions. So yeah, thank you guys for listening. Okay, then let's open the floor to some questions. Um, I think Chris immediately had a question. So why don't you go first, Chris, with your question? I'll actually, uh, I'll, I'll yield my uh, first question to Ronnie. Okay, sounds good, Ronnie. Why don't you go first? All right, thank you, Chris. And thank you, Maya and Jocelyn. Um, this question is for both of you. Um, so tournaments have been one of the very popular events um, throughout the history of the club. Um, so I'm just wondering, um, how would you determine the best type of tournaments to host for our members? Like in the past, we've had 3v3, 3v3 tournaments, doubles tournaments, um, Halloween tournaments, Valentine's tournaments. So like, how would you determine the best type of tournament for our members, like in the situation and everything that's going on? Oh, hello. Uh, can you guys hear me? Okay, sorry. Um, I guess I can start off, but I, I guess uh, one thing to consider would probably be when you are planning to host the tournament and who it will be attending. 
So I guess if it's just like a general open tournament open to, I guess, all of U of A students or uh, other universities or other schools, like I know Concordia also has a badminton team as well, I think. I don't know if they play with you guys though, but um, I guess uh, if it's something like that, we could probably, I would most likely uh, keep it to just like your standard uh, tournament style where you have like a section for doubles, singles and mixed. Um, but if it was just kind of like a club tournament, like a Halloween themed or like a Valentine's one, uh, I feel like you could have a little bit more fun with that. And you can have, I guess, like the 3v3 styles or like a King's Court, I guess. And uh, I guess anything that you would really want to do, you can even offer prizes in the sense if it's Halloween, you could give out candy. <laughs> thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Um, okay, so Chris. Like, oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, it's all good. Um, so in this situation, uh, we need to see people's schedules um, and also who's attending because I know a lot of us are really busy with our like our own lives. So we got to see kind of plan out um, when people like people's plans so that we can kind of work around the schedule and uh, to see like who's attending. Um, also, like as I'm, I'm good at working around schedule, so I wrote things down the calendar, so I know exactly what day like we're doing this, so that if we have a schedule, and then we can always like rearrange it if we have to based on people's schedules. So that's basically what I go based on, like people's schedules. We if we can postpone it like based on people's schedules, we can do so. Um, as what Mai said with like the singles and the doubles. If we have to like have a little more more fun, we can always bring a lot of toys to it because I'm an adventurous person, so I want to try something new to see people like it. If not, people always um, put it in the feedback chat, and if they don't like it, we can always change it to create a happy meeting for everyone to make sure that everyone is satisfied with uh, what tournaments are being presented to them. Awesome. Thank you, both of you. So I think there's one more question. I think Logan has a question. Hi. Can you hear me? Yep. Perfect. Perfect. Um, so, I mean, it's not always the case, but often the role of vice president uh, is seen as a stepping stone for the role of president. So my question is a bit of a two-parter. Uh, first, are you interested in um, working towards the role of president? And second, if you are, what would you do to work towards that position? Thank you. Uh, Jocelyn, if you want to start first. Sure. Um, yes, thank you for your uh, question, Logan. Um, so the first question, yes, I am definitely willing to work towards vice president um, because, because I have been president for the UNICEF club. I want to try something new and I'm willing to gain more ex gain experience by being in uh, as a VP and to your second question um, can you repeat your question please your second question what would you do to work towards your goal as your VP um, I would talk to the previous executive who had been in that position and to see if they have like any advices that they could give. Um, and also a bit, do a bit more research on it to see what I can do to help. And uh, I'm for sure willing to be, to uh, work towards it. Okay, so now I think it's Maya's turn. <laughs> Yes, yeah, that, that's how you pronounce it. Um, but yes, I am uh, interested in the role of president. Uh, I guess the one way that I would, or the main way that I would work towards that role would be to, I guess, sort of, well, I'm not 100% sure uh, what the role of the president does, but I'm assuming it, um, it, sorry, it involves allocating the different tasks to the other executive members in the club. So the main thing that I would do would just be to kind of observe what they're doing and see how they're kind of 
managing the different tasks and see what works efficiently and what doesn't work properly, I guess, so that I know that if I um, were to ever take on their position, I would already know uh, what hasn't worked in the past and would have my own ideas that I would like to try. Oh, thank you. That's all. All right, thank you for that, Mai. Um, unfortunately, we will just have to keep moving on. Chris, we won't be able to get to your question just for the sake of time. Um, so last but not least, we have the candidate running for president. So the role of the president is essentially you're managing the direction of the club and then you're over uh, overall overseeing the club and just managing operations uh, as a whole and make sure just following up with your team members to kind of see where they are, see what their plans are and just discuss any changes that need to take place. Uh, you also act as the main communication liaison between UABC, so the club and then club sports as well. So club sports, oh, and at the members as well. And essentially what club sports is, is pretty much our version of the management of our club and so you have to discuss them with them and with the members as well just to see uh, how you can align your different values perspectives and goals together so we have one candidate for this position and it is rose who is also our pr for this year so you can go ahead rose and do your speech now Okay, cool. Thanks. So hi, everyone. Hopefully you've seen me around the club before. But if you haven't, I'll just formally introduce myself again. So my name is Rose, and I'm in my second year in physiology. And as Shirley mentioned, I've been part of this club um, since my first year, I was the public relations officer this year. And I thought it was just really cool getting to see the roles and the duties of all the other execs and just how this club worked. So this year, with that prior experience, I'd like to run for president because I like just to keep building our badminton community. So like a lot of um, the other candidates mentioned, I think what really stood out about this club is really just the chance to meet a lot of different people, different faculties, different years, but we all have that common love of badminton and everyone's just really welcoming. So I'm glad to hear that um, some of you guys who just joined the first year really did feel welcome. It is hard with everything online, but we're glad that you guys definitely felt that way. So with COVID though, I know that it will definitely be harder as a result because we're all kind of stuck online. But I do have some ideas just to keep us all connected and that we maintain some of our badminton skills. So my ideas are firstly um, continuing our podcast that our current president Shirley has introduced and as um, May mentioned we did do like a family feud and something like that so depending on all of your guys' ideas and feedback it's something that we could definitely continue and just definitely we want to be talking about topics that you're interested in so we'll definitely have constant just making sure we're reaching out for your guys' feedback and secondly, just to keep our badminton skills, I was thinking we could even introduce something like doing a monthly badminton challenge. And we could even like set up a Discord or something so that it's less formal, but it's easier for um, just everyone in our club just to communicate and have easier back and forth. And an example of this, it could be just something like a monthly challenge, something as simple as just like how many times who can catch the most badminton shuttles, I guess, like with their racket in one minute. And we can have a fun little competition that way so that we still have incentive to pick up our rackets, even if we can't meet up in club, unfortunately. And the third thing um, I was thinking is that because we can't really have our semester and dinner, we can certainly supplement it with a virtual equivalent. So there are lots of just online board games, online games in general that we could play. And, or it could be as simple as even like something badminton related, doesn't have to be, but even just having maybe a pair up system, having a gym buddy, so to speak, or just something so that we all maintain our stamina and don't just kind of drop everything. So that's my plan as we just wait for our gradual reopening. But if we are in person, then I'd like just to continue just all the previous pre-COVID programs that we have in place. So that just includes all our tournaments, whether that's singles, doubles, mixed, um, or even just um, having coaching and 
having our semester end dinners and as well as merch. So I think with, especially with COVID where everything's just changing quite quickly, the communication is really key just to make sure everything's running smoothly. And as presidents, just making sure that really adapting the club, I guess, to whatever comes our way, but also making sure that everyone just knows what's going on, whether that's other execs or just um, you guys as the members. So I'll always be open to your guys' ideas or concerns, and I'll work hard with the rest of the execs to bring you guys the best possible experience. So vote for me is a vote for a rosy time. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much, Rat. Uh, your blurb, Rose. <laughs> yeah, does anyone have any questions for the present? Oh, there you go, exactly. So um, does anyone have a question, uh, including Chris? I have a question, and okay. since Chris is yielding, I <laughs> will ask the first question. Okay. Um, okay, so Rose, uh, uh, one of the things that I kind of had a bit of difficulty with this year was trying to kind of keep the team motivated and connected, especially with sessions having been canceled and not, have, not having the ability to kind of meet everyone together and really just keep up to date with everyone, especially being like a student on top of that as well. And that's like a whole other struggle on its own. What would like ideally for you, what would you put in place to kind of make sure that you're able to keep that connection and motivation in your team, but uh, still keep that balance in your life for yourself? Definitely, I think that's a great point, especially just, I guess, balancing all the moving parts with COVID. Definitely harder to meet people in person as well. But I think definitely having meetings helps and like even something like biweekly or monthly, just so that the whole team can catch up. And I think one of the benefits, I guess, of having a smaller team is that it's easier for everyone's time schedules to fit. So just even like something, yeah, like an hour or less, just making sure that we can have like a common vision of like what we see, um, what we want to do with the club this semester. Like, presumably if it's still online, it's like, well, where do you want to go then for this semester? And based on that and the meetings, then we can just work something out. And I think just making sure everyone knows like their roles and just what they're supposed to do for before that time and the next meeting. Great, thank you. Hi, Russ. So this is to follow up Shirley's question. So being the only returning exec in the team this year or next year, what do you plan to get the new exec team running for the new semester club? Yeah, so definitely. That's actually where all of you guys come in because that's why, um, I believe that's why we usually do the turnovers, right? Like at the end of February though, because there's still like two months left of school. So with all of your experience in the club, you guys can pass on all that knowledge to everyone that's running. So then everyone still, you know, there's no loss in the transfer of knowledge because everything will be passed on. Right. Uh, I was going to ask a question, but I think Julia is literally word for word oh. uh, the question that I scripted for you. Um, I, I guess I have a second part to my question, is it, but still kind of in line with what Julia's asked. Basically, how will you best leverage the skill sets, the specific skill sets of your teammates uh, in order to have a successful uh, upcoming season? Yeah, definitely. And I think that's also part of where the club meetings comes in and just seeing what is everyone's vision as well for their role and seeing how I can best help develop them and like help them develop whatever they see as well as both like for their individual role and the club as a general. So that's where I think it goes really back to communication and that's really key. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you very much. All right, thank you for the question. Okay, I just have one quick fun question. Is that okay, Shirley? Yes, I was going to ask another question too, and I feel like oh. the question I wanted to ask was very important, but you can go first. Oh, no, no, then go for oh, it. Go goodness. for it. Mine isn't that important, so go for it. Okay. Thank you, Simon. So this is actually a pretty, it's like a situational type of question, and it actually quite closely reflects something that the president has to deal with quite frequently. 
Um, so how would you approach a situation if your boss and your staff had different objectives to a project that you were in charge of? So an example would be that your boss wanted to cut down the job positions to improve operational efficiency, but your staff wanted more opportunities for promotion. Ooh. I think in that case, it would really depend on the context as like the surrounding factors. So I don't think that would be the solely determining factor. Like I think it really also comes back to something like even looking at the finances, like, okay, we want more opportunities. Like are we able to hire more staff? And like, why, right? Like why for both sides? Like why are we wanting to cut down jobs? And also like, why do they want more opportunities? And I think for something like that, it's not like a straight yes or no. It, there has to be like underlying reasons for each like person's perspective. And it's getting at that first before making a decision either way. Okay, so uh, an add on to that, would be, that was a great answer, by the way. Uh, just an add on to that question as well. What do you think for you would be the most important um, thing to make sure you implement or value that you implement or your strategy to implement when you're approaching this type of situation, if that makes sense? Wait, so are you asking for a value or a plan? I guess, I guess my question would more be like, what would be the most important piece that you need to be very, I don't know how to ask this question. What do you think is very important to make sure that you implement when approaching this type of situation, if that makes sense? Okay, I'll try my best to answer it. Let me know if I don't <laughs> answer what you we are trying to get at. But I think it comes down to first, like, getting to know what each side is thinking and what they want. Because based on that, very likely there is a common goal. It's just they're approaching it in different ways. So once we can figure out why are they in different, like what are their underlying reasons for whatever vision, I guess, or whatever plan they want to do, then after that's figured out, then we can figure out, okay, where's the middle ground and how do we compromise? Okay, you did answer my question. Thank you. All right, so I think that that really closes out this uh, today's election day. Or I have one more question. Oh, oh, go for it. Go for it. Right. So I just have a question for you, and then what's what goal do you want to prioritize for your presidency year to improve the club? Yeah, so that's a great question. And I think that really depends on when we can reopen. But um, assuming everything remains online, I think it's really just being able to like, talk about badminton and still really um, along the lines of the podcast and also being able to just foster a sense of community. So whether that is through like something discord or just being able to have badminton, even though that is like required to be very much in person, just having something still that we all feel like there's something to do and we can still be connected as a club. So I would say community. And both like within the exec team, making sure that we have that connection, we're able to really communicate and work well together and also between the whole club. That would be my priority. Thank you. Okay, so that kind of closes us off today's meeting. I think it's so awesome that all the candidates got to see each other, you know, kind of face to face, kind of to get a sense of like what the next year's Bounton team, Bounton team club, all the exec members uh, is going to be like. I think just I want to mention some important dates and then I think Shirley has some details to add on to that. But 
the election's gonna close this Friday at 8 p.m. So this Friday 8 p.m., you know, you can ask your friends to help vote for you. Importantly, as candidates, you guys can vote for yourself or others. And then as candidates, you guys will get to know all the details, um, the results on Saturday. And then publicly, all these details will be announced on Sunday. So I think uh, there's a question. Let's see. What if what is the process if an a candidate wins multiple positions? Um, yeah, so I think that's the key on Saturday. Once we the you know we go through the results, we go through the numbers. I think we'll contact that individual indiv that individual individually uh, and let them know that they won both positions and perhaps they can pick the role they'd want. And then once the other role opens up, then we can see who else is left on that for that position. So that's how we approach that. Um, yes, of course, right? You know, you guys as future execs, you're supposed to represent the club members. So it'd be weird if like someone in engineering voted for the other club. I'm kidding. But yeah, um, I think. Or Simon, Chris had something to yeah. add. Yeah. So... Yes, I just, I, uh, I just want to move for either audible or visual applause for the 2021 uh, UABC exec in recognition of all their hard work and dedication to the club's operations during this past season. That's awesome. Yeah, Josh. Yay. Yay. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Jocelyn, you need to ask something to clarify. Um. Yeah. So there's like five roles. And there's five of us. So we each one, we each get a role if someone wins. Two. Um, most likely, we would have to follow up to see kind of if there are who won what roles. So in the incident where one person wins two roles, then they would get the first option to pick. And then we would follow up with the other person if they hadn't gotten a role yet, if they wanted to fill the empty position. In the case that uh, the fifth person wasn't the one who ran for the role and they, we didn't get anything, we might follow up with them to see what their interest is in that position itself. Um, so for example, I'll just use you. So like if you didn't get uh, either of the position, but the treasure position opened up because um, Danica chose the other position to fill, then we would probably follow up with you to see if you had any interest in it. And um, if you did, I think we would might have to kind of see how the formalities of that would work out to be like, as in if we had to roll out any other electoral forms to have that go through our members to make sure that, that that's kind of an okay thing or if it's okay to appoint someone into that position, uh, we would need to clarify the details on that. Okay, thank you for the clarification. That all makes sense now. All right. Well, thank you, everyone, for coming out today. Um, and as Simon has given you our dates, we will also be posting this video um, live. Uh, and if you guys have any other further questions before the elections close or if, you think, and, or if you think of anything else after this, feel free to send us a message and we will get back to you before then. But if you do not, we will, as Simon said, let the candidates here know what the results are on Saturday. So that is regardless of whether you win a position or not. So thank you very much, everyone. And this will be the end of it. So we will be in touch very soon.